are these people? So actually, this is a kind of a feel good story. Um, <laughs> kind of. Um, so we've talked about Mali and Niger in, in passing uh, over the, within the last few months of how those countries, so, so they are known as the Sahel states, uh, given the region in Africa that they're located, um, of them gradually removing imperial, Western imperialism from their countries. Basically, they're like, y'all shit. Y'all are, um, you are exposing, you, you guys are, basically get you out of here. Uh, just given history and then um, exploiting them, you know, for the means of the West. So they've basically been like, get the fuck out. So now, uh, over the weekend, uh, these countries have formed a confederation um, in light of removing Western powers from their countries. So this is from Africa Stream. Um, they also linked a video to this, but this tweet is kind of long, so I'll read this first. Uh, where they say, West lackeys are house slaves. Ibrahim Traore, so he's, um, so he's now the president of Niger. Uh, he is in the picture that you saw on the left. Um, Burkina, Burkina oh, no, Burkina Faso. Sorry, no, wrong country. So Burkina Faso President Ibrahim Traore met with his Mal Malian and Nigerian counterparts on 6th of July in Niamey, Niger, to create the Alliance of Sahel States Confederation. All three states have successfully ousted Western line leaders over the past few years. In Niger, the 36-year-old president uh, used the occasion to deliver a powerful speech denouncing imperialism and the African lackeys that hold the imperialist system. We're actually going to get to that speech later. Um, his reference to house slaves who will do anything to please their masters is reminiscent of Malcolm X's famous speech, Message to the Grassroots, during which X speaks about house Negroes and field Negroes. It has been a long time since we have heard an African leader speak so boldly in public about the neo-colonial system that uses African henchmen to direct the flow of profits from the African continent to the West, which we've also discussed ad nauseum on this show. Are we in a new era when African leaders who have their people's interests at heart will speak out against the exploitation Africans have suffered under for far too long? Let us know in the comments. So they also produced this clip. You can zoom out. Um, so we'll watch this and we'll get a little bit more into it and then we will continue. You got it. Ces impérialistes n'ont qu'un seul cliché en These imperialists have only one cliché in mind. Africa is the empire of slaves. That's how they see Africa. For them, Africans belong to them. They own our lands. They own our subsoils. And they've never been able to change the program until now. It's deplorable. But how do we do that? Do it. Unfortunately, since the 1960s, Africa has been given the sham independence. All they've done is put lackeys in charge, in charge of their sub-prefectures, so we can continue to feed them. These lackeys, whom today we are going to call house slaves, have no other reference point than to seek to live like the master to satisfy the master and to do everything the master dictates they steal they plunder our states bringing everything to their master and their wealth is kept by the master they do everything to live like the master and to always satisfy him Whatever the master orders, they execute. Do you know who these house slaves are? Well, let's find out. They're individuals with no dignity, no morals, no personality. But the slave master, 
has always been able to identify these individuals. They are always ready to betray their brothers, to satisfy the master. They have betrayed us since independence, and others continue to this day to betray us for the benefit of their master. These individuals continue against all odds to plunder Africa, and they have helped the master to plunder Africa. So, where's the line? I want to play the whole thing in full because it is ridiculous how good it is. Okay. Definitely um, reminiscent of anything Malcolm X has said uh, in the past. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, so, let's go to this RT article. This is. Um, so, they report Sahel military government's established confederation. Documents detailing new level ties between Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso were signed at a summit on Saturday. So RT, come on, continue, writes, the military rulers of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have established a confederation alliance by signing a treaty at their inaugural summit in the Nigerian capital of Niamey on Saturday. It follows their recent decision to cut ties with the existing economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS. Uh, the summit was intended to further consolidate the AEEs -E Union, Alliance des États du Sahel in French, mm -hmm. the Alliance of Sahel States, the establishment of which was announced last September. Back then, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger signed a charter agreeing to help each other in the event of the external aggression or internal threats to their sovereignty which we have talked about on this show before. Mali has assumed the chairmanship of the alliance for a one-year term. Burkina Faso will host the first special session of ministers for the confederation comprising the three African nations, according to a statement issued after the trilateral summit in Niger. On this historic day for our peoples, I'm pleased to sign together with my brothers from Burkina Faso and Niger, the documents for the operationalization and creation of the AECE AES Confederation. I am honored that Mali has been chosen as chair country. Uh, Mali's transitional president, Asimi Guta, posted on X. Following the summit, a communique was released stating that the nations had agreed to coordinate diplomatic efforts, create an AES investment bank, and combine their resources to develop projects in strategic sectors such as mining, energy, and agriculture. In March, the three countries decided to establish a joint force to address security threats, with, threats within their territories. The charter was signed by the three transitional heads of state, Mali's President Asimi Gota, Nigerian President Le Nigerian leader, oh Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I am not gonna try. <laughs> Adura Hamane, Tichiani. Adura Hamane, yeah, that's what. <laughs> There you go. You're people, better Bear. I mean, I, you should be able to figure it out. You know, <laughs> find that mother tongue in there somewhere. You'll 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 make it. Except my mother tongue <laughs> is Ebo, not well. This. You know, you don't have to do true trade and whatever. Like, you know, Nigerian and many leader. Names, and many of these names, to be fair, are French, which I can read. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Nigerian leader. Um, uh, and the president of Fakina Faisal, Ibrahim Traore. That one um, you get. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah, that's, Fran that's, a, French, that's a French name. Um, the signing took place on the day before the ECOWAS summit, which hopes to change the decision of the free countries to leave the bloc. However, the Sahil states have ruled out returning to the West African economic bloc. Tahini described the AES summit as the culmination of our resolute collective will. Excuse me to reclaim our national sovereignty. Our peoples have irreversibly turned away from ECOWAS, the Nigerian leader said. Yeah. Um, Otto uh, Oga, Oga, Oga Dugu, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mamanko and Niame have accused the Western African political and economic bloc of posing a threat of their sovereignty by serving as a tool for foreign powers, particularly France, with whom they have served, severed military ties. Um, 
Any thoughts? Because we've talked about these guys before. Yeah. Um, I'm worried. How... I'm, I'm worried about repercussions. NATO and the West might decide to throw at them. You know, right? We the, right the, those those dark lords work in mysterious ways. So, you know, who knows what what might befall these countries coming up? So, you know, who's uh famine, pestilence? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, plenty of ways that that could go down, but we'll know why uh, when it comes up. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think that's definitely going to be an issue, but at least for right now, they seem to be moving, kind of reminds me of BRICS, but without the Western influence, so to speak, yeah. um, of being able to share resources and build their own essentially network amongst themselves that yeah. does not include the West. Sounds like so speaking of uh, Ibrahim Dr. Ray, 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 um mm. did so I'm gonna play this in full so it's just under ten minutes. Yeah. Uh and it's uh, and it's um and it's um and it's it's subtitled in English so we don't have to read it. Um uh, but I think I mean, I'll just have you guys listen for yourselves, and then you can comment after. Um, so go ahead. This continent has suffered so much and continues to suffer because of imperialists. These imperialists have only one cliche in mind. Africa is the empire of slaves. This is how they see Africa. For them, Africans belong to them. Our lands belong to them. Our subsoil belongs to them. They have never been able to change the logic until today. This is deplorable. But how do they proceed? Unfortunately, it is since the 1960s that these 6,000 acres of independence have been given to Africa. They have just placed local valets at the head, according to them, of their sub-prefecture to be able to continue to feed them. These local valets, which we are going to call today the slaves of Salon, have other goals. They want to live like the master, to satisfy the master, and to do everything that the master dictates to them. They steal, they plunder our states, they bring everything to the master, and their wealth is kept with the master. They do everything to live like the master and always satisfy him. Do you know who these slaves of Salon are? Well, we are going to explain to you what they are. They are individuals who have no dignity, who have no morals, who have no personality. But the master slave has always known how to identify these individuals. They are always ready to betray their brother, to satisfy the master. They have betrayed us since independence, and others continue to betray us to the benefit of their master. These individuals continue, against all odds, to help the master plunder Africa. They like to say it every year. In their economic polls, Burkina is the poorest country, Mali is the poorest country, Niger is the poorest country. We are ranked among the last. Very well, if we are as poor as they say. But when the time has come to take responsibility, we have asked this master to leave the place. Why don't they want to leave? When we take the case of Niger, for more than 40 years, some countries have been exploiting uranium to produce energy at home. From Ottawa to Paris, the streets are illuminated. It is the light. But in Niger, it is the darkness that has served us. When you go to our states, our soils are full of precious metals, such as gold. But often there is not even the slightest road accessible to reach the areas where they exploit gold, even less certain basic social services. This is why we have decided to revolt and take the fate of our countries into our own hands. There are many other examples. But when we decided so, we were approached by some saloon slaves to pass on the message of their master. Because they had created this kind of polymer chain that rises to the heads of our states to serve them. And we came to break the chain. And it is inconceivable for them. They approached us and asked us to enter the ranks to make the elite leave that must lead Africa. 
qui doit diriger l'Afrique parce qu'ils ont une élite formée et formatée. Because they have an elite formed and formatted that must follow. That is embedded in this chain. We refuse to enter their ranks. And then the hostilities began. Les hostilités ont commencé. They have sent several mercenaries and trainers to our area. The agents have descended into the Sahel to carry out barbaric, cowardly attacks against our people, hoping to revolt them. In addition to these attacks on the ground, the attacks on communication, manipulation and disinformation are full in their ranks. But the people of the Sahel have understood, and we will never be able to be manipulated again. They know where they come from, they know what they are doing, and they know where they are going. We will no longer allow this. People are awake and people are fighting today. Not for ourselves, but for future generations. And thank you all for the fight that is being fought. This will never make us cry. We will not tremble. We will fight. We will fight for real independence, for our freedom. Because to scare the people of the Sahel, these individuals have only three terms in their mouths. Democracy, freedom, human rights. Of course, their local values are only elected in a democratic, free and transparent process according to their values. What is more normal, that we want to impose this on ourselves because it is they who dictate the rules. Very well, we have decided to take responsibility. Do you know why on June 26, 2023, when Niger decided to turn the page, the slaves of Salon and their masters got on the big horses? They put their local values forward and decided to wage a war against the Nigerian people. So we said, anyone who dares to take up arms against Niger will face us. Because we will wage a merciless war until the last drop of blood for anyone who dares to attack our states. This word, this decision we made yesterday, is current today and will be current tomorrow and forever. Thus, we acquired the AES on September 16, 2023, in a mutual defense architecture. But we felt it necessary to extend and therefore enlarge the AES architecture. What brings us together today must allow us to go to other areas, in addition to defense, including finance and economy, infrastructure, health, education. In short, I pass. So I hope that this moment will be for us a story that we will write for the AES, but especially for Africa and for the whole world. May God illuminate each and every one of us. May God inspire. Sorry, I gotta back it up just a second. Is that you got a bottle of Jameson in the crowd? May God inspire us in these tasks that are entrusted to us, and above all, that when we do all our work, that we have in mind only one thing. The supreme interest of our people. On this, we pray once again, good God, that he accompanies us all in our different tasks. That he protects our fighters, who thanks to them, allow us to sit here and exchange about the future of our states. So be grateful once again, Nigerian people. Be united and united, people of the AES, the homeland or death. What does that sound like? Sounds very familiar, that statement. <laughs> um, beginning of our what country kind of started with one of those. One of those statements right, right there. Um, right. Give me liberty. I think it was, what is it, Kwame Ture, when they say the exact same thing? That's Baldwin. James Baldwin. Baldwin? Yeah. 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 Um, when the also, wrong can I just say... African military uniforms are just chest kiss. Y'all got that shit on lock, dude. Like, with the berets and the fucking camo. Like, you're repping the actual earth of your country with that nonsense. Looks good, dude. Looks good out there. All You could tell exactly, like, oh, that's like some grassy area. You know? Um, yeah, good stuff, though. Um, yeah. Yeah. So... I mean, very sounds 
very revolutionary. Um, right, which, so, as you said, will might be cause for the West to change tactics before yeah. too long. Um, uh, but given, like, I, I, well, I've said this, I've, I have, I'm cautiously optimistic about Trey um, yeah. and I think because he's young. I'm sorry, um, you're going to have to now give his whole title, uh, you know, Traore Breaker of Chains, and, like, you're going to have to right. like, do the whole Game of um, Thrones title right, in that but one. It, right, but it's just so weird that this is what we should be re talk talking about more in independent media. This is the kind of yeah. revolution, quote-unquote, that people want that is happening right now in Africa, and people are just kind of silent about it, or uh -huh. not aware of it and happening in South but America the idea that in... this young guy mm -hmm. who is very much very much in tune with and th he's the best example of what a leader not trying be. to reinvent the wheel of yeah. oh we need to do something no we have plenty of examples in the past of already done it mm -hmm. just follow kind of what they're doing and you'll probably have to remix it to today's standards, but you can tell he's very much walking, I'm sure, I'm fairly certain he has read, or is familiar with Malcolm X, for sure. Yeah, Malcolm, so, Ture, I mean... All like, but he definitely has you know, uh, Lumbia, you know, yeah. all these African or pan-African like revolutionaries, probably Garvey as well, like, he's definitely, but this is like the example of it's one thing to talk about the theory. It's another thing to kind of execute it in practice, in practical ways. And so I think he's the prime example of what you're able to do. It's not just him speaking out the theory. He's He actually kind of took the theory on and look at him now. Like, he basically overtook his government. And now, you know, like, he's seemingly doing very well, or at least it's looked very favorably. Yeah. in this region of West Africa right now. And the fact that he's willing to call out his other African brothers, and yeah, he could have named them. I think he wanted to be somewhat yeah, respectful. Mean, he said know? the ones who like, took up arms against us. That's saying it without right. saying it. Yeah, but that, that says more than enough of who that is. Yeah. You know, so... Um, but yeah, very promising. The ones um, sending police to Haiti right now. Those same... Right, people. right, so um, right. We know who those people are, and yeah. But it, it's funny that you can use this speech for people here. Mm -hmm. Like that's so. I think that's the very thing of why I wanted to bring it. Uh, play this mm -hmm. is I think, and especially for like the FBAs or the ADOS people who are like, oh, "I have a great shit." You know, and all this kind of stuff. We have nothing to do with Africa. Well, guess what? Like in West Africa, this is what they're doing. This is what they're able to accomplish right now. And like what you guys are doing. Right. So, but I think, so again, it's kind of sad that he's not getting any more attention in independent media, but, um, but I'm glad that it's happening, at least for now, in terms of what they plan to do to form this um, confederation mm -hmm. and hopefully be able to make moves in terms of really doing stuff for their people and not Yay. have to less be involved in like exploiting their them and their resources. And he made the point. It represents what you're against. It represents what you are for. Yeah. So it's like what he said. If we're so poor, why get out? Why are <laughs> yeah. you still here? What the fuck like, you doing? Right. It's not that mm -hmm. we're poor, it's that you want to make us poor. You steal because... our wealth is what it is. Right. Let's make let's call it what it is. <laughs> Y'all take the wealth we got for yourself, as we right. tend to do here in the upper hemisphere. But yeah. Ugh. Well good luck to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I, I mean, like I said, he could very well, but that's the risk you take, though. Like, yeah, it could very well not be around for too much longer. But 
and who know and I'm sure like the West may not necessarily do that because they don't want to necessarily martyr him and like have yeah. it be a little bit more, like more chaotic. So it'll be very interesting to see within the next I just, few I can, months, years. I can how picture this a Hillary Clinton cackle of we came, we saw, we got him. You know? Right. Like that kind of nonsense. So Y'all, y'all but, better learn from people's mistakes. Y'all better learn. Right. Y'all better know some stuff. You know, right. protect yourself at all times. That's all I'm saying. Um, yeah. Ugh. Well, you know, yeah. But regardless, uh, we're able to do stories like this uh, due to your guys' donations and. Uh, for sharing our content and we want to do that even though we are fully demonetized on youtube so if you like us to continue making more stories like this please click on the link that you see at the bottom of your screen where you're able to donate uh towards the channel or you can use your phone and uh scan this qr code where you're able to donate to us on ko-fi you can also go to our description to see uh the other ways that you can donate to the channel um if you don't want to necessarily do that um and as always thank you guys for liking and sharing our content it's definitely the only way that we're able to do what we're doing in terms of being able to produce the content that we are so please don't forget to like share and subscribe uh and make sure you leave a comment so let us know especially what did you think of um Traore's speech how valid do you think it is in terms of what's happening in the west and what would you like to see happen like in terms that we're able to move in a radical way like they're doing in west africa right now um and help us get to 3k um we, we've been very fortunate that we finally hit the 2k mark but we don't want to take as long to get to the next thousand so mm -hmm. please help us out by sharing our content and thanks for watching